Coming up, we'll show you why a simple act of kindness in Fargo is going viral on social media. Plus. So am I being targeted on this? I don't. A candidate in next month's election setting the record straight after an anonymous group stirred the pot within the Cass County Sheriff's Office and the veterans are back after a whirlwind trip to Washington. Mike Morgan joins us live as Valley News Live at 10 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 10. I'm being called a scumbag. I'm getting called a narc. I'm getting called all of this. I didn't leak this information. Good evening, everyone. A candidate in next month's election is setting the record straight tonight, saying he's not behind the anonymous group stirring the pot within the Cass County Sheriff's Office. A group going by Code 4 Media sent investigative files to a slew of local reporters and news outlets Monday. Valley News Live later uncovered Sheriff Candidate Matt King was the only person who requested those documents, raising questions about his involvement. But as King told Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley, it's not him. And he wants answers, he says, just as much as everyone else. It's hard not to think that it isn't politically motivated because of the timing of it. It's been a frustrating 24 hours for a Cass County Sheriff candidate, Matt King. He says he's in the dark as much as the public when it comes to who's behind Code 4 media. I am not Code 4. I am not associated with Code 4. I don't know Code 4. In new emails to Valley News Live, Code 4 Media says they do not endorse a specific candidate this election with their goal to, quote, inform the voters of what's going on in the Cass County Sheriff's Office. Are they unhappy with things that are going on inside the office? Or is it supposed to make John or look bad? Is it supposed to, what? What is the intent? When it comes to those investigative files released Monday regarding a nude photo sent from one deputy to another, King says yes, he did request those documents, but says he also showed them to others in the department. So am I being targeted on this? I don't know. King says he's not sure if someone he showed those documents to is behind the anonymous group. He says he also doesn't know if someone within the department with access to those files provided them to the group. When asked if the latter could be possible, Sheriff Jesse Johnner says, well, it could be. He didn't think that was the case. And King says he wants those in the group to take responsibility and come forward. But Code 4 Media tells us that won't ever happen. Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Valley News Live has been working to uncover the identities of those behind Code 4 Media. We have open records requests in search of those answers still being worked on across government offices. Stick with us as we continue to follow this developing story. Meanwhile, we are getting close to a big change in the weather department. First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson joins us now with your look at the forecast. Hutch! Yeah, you have that right, Justin Betty. As we head into our Tuesday evening, we enjoyed lovely conditions today. A few spotty showers a couple of rumbles of thunder and a gorgeous and colorful sunset. Speaking of colorful, thank you. Check this out. Oh my goodness, look at the beauty there. This is an explosion of color in Euland. We have more of these later. Right now, let's talk about what's going on. We're quiet here in the FM area. Temperatures are comfortable. The showers have all but exited the area, so it does look like for most of us, things will be quite quiet. We did have a couple of rumbles of thunder north of I-94 earlier tonight. Upper 50s for many up north and near 60 down to the south for uniform temperatures across the area, light winds and quiet conditions. Hey, it looks like big changes will happen Thursday, Friday. We have added Saturday to the first alert weather day slew for a cold air mass that will begin migrating its way down late Wednesday. Thursday is a day of transition, but the coldest of the air gets here on Friday morning for many of our northern counties. So Thursday, be prepared. Get ready for the cold to take hold. Friday morning, have your frost scraper handy. Have the uh, hoses disconnected from the outside faucets. Some of our southern counties will have their coldest morning on Saturday. So be prepared. That's what First Alert is all about. We'll have hour by hour details coming up here in just a few more moments. But enjoy one more day of warmth tomorrow. All the details on all of it here in a minute. We will. Thanks, Hutch. <laughs> yeah. Veterans from the Red River Valley were given a hero's welcome at Hector International Airport tonight. They returned from a busy three-day trip to our nation's capital. Valley News Team's Mike Morgan was on the trip. We're excited. He's joining us now live in studio with details. Mike. 
Thank you so much, Justin and Stacy. We made it home pretty much on schedule and what a trip it was. Our flight time back to Fargo, a little more than two and a half hours and a little time to rest. So as you can see, once on the ground in Fargo, these veterans' hearts were jumping again as they heard applause, listened to the band play and saw loved ones cheering their return. Many vets telling me on the trip that they were able to see the monuments and the memorials, enjoy food, the banquets and the moving programs that they experienced, and then tonight's return, top notch. There were so many people, signs, even North Dakota U.S. Senator John Hoven was there and shook the hand of every returning veteran. Huh. Just about crying. Really nice, really nice. Well, it means that American people are American people. They stick together for us veterans. And I'm happy. All these uh, 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 people helping, and uh, it's just amazing. The volunteers that they have, they do such a good job that, you know, it, it, it's hard to describe, really. When, when you're here, and you see all their friends, their family, just people from the community coming out and saying, thank you for stepping up and defending our country. Boy, it hits home. These guys are the best. We love them. When you think about these honor flights, it's amazing how well organized they are. During three days, we made 12 separate stops, drove past the White House and Capitol building several times, mm -hmm. dodged rain, and brought everyone home safely. A pretty good way to end a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Justin, Stacy. Thanks, Mike. And uh, that trip makes three in our area just this year. Yeah, for a look back at our coverage, go to BaileyNewsLive.com or your VNL News app. Well, the Becker County community will remember two of their own found dead in their home last week. They died in what law enforcement is calling a murder suicide. Friends tell us 45 year old Stephen Stearns and 49 year old Stacy Stearns were both diagnosed with terminal cancers. The two had made plans to go into the afterlife together. On Saturday, October 22nd, the community will gather at Height of Land Sportsman Club for one last celebration. They plan to shoot clays, have a hayride, a good meal, dancing, and a bonfire, all for Stacy and Steve. A Fargo man who's been on the run from police since August is now behind bars. 31-year-old Robin Heinenen was arrested early this morning on several outstanding warrants. Police say they got a tip that he was in an apartment along 42nd Street South. Authorities set up a perimeter around the building. When they went inside, they say Heinenen jumped off the balcony. He was then caught by a Fargo PD canine officer. Some of the crimes he was wanted for include gross sexual imposition, terrorizing, and aggravated assault. Meanwhile, a Bismarck man is behind bars after police say they found more than 20,000 fentanyl pills in his home. Police searched 34-year-old David Rogers' home Friday. They say he was trying to flush those pills down the toilet when they arrived. Police also found 45 grams of meth and a stolen firearm. He's facing multiple drug-related charges, including intent to deliver. New for you tonight, mugshots for people in Burley and Morton County look a little different. Now they have their faces blacked out here, but look closer. They're all wearing black plastic bags over their clothes. The Sheriff's Department says this is a request from investigators saying clothing can help create unbiased lineups from photos covering the clothing rather. The city of West Fargo is asking voters to approve a one half percent sales tax increase in November to help fund public safety. They say in 2021 there were 239 times with no fire companies available for emergency response due to ongoing calls for service. There are only two school resource officers to cover 16 elementary schools and response times for both fire and medical calls are slower than national standards due to lack of crews. Election day is November 8th. Former President Trump is asking the Supreme Court to weigh in on the Mar-a-Lago classified records case. Last month's appeals Department of Justice to continue its review of the more than 100 documents marked as classified they say were taken from Mar-a-Lago. Trump's team wants them to stop until the special master in this case can review them first. We're just over one month until election day, just two weeks until the Minnesota governor's debate right here on Valley News Live. I'll be a part of the panel of journalists asking Governor Tim Walls and challenger Scott Jensen questions live from KTTC TV in Rochester, Minnesota. You can submit questions, ideas, 
to me at my email address, justin.betty, B-E-T-T-I, at valleynewslive.com. The debate itself is set for Tuesday, October 18th from 7 till 8 p.m. It'll air live on KX4. It'll live stream on valleynewslive.com. Look for our website for more information. Still to come here.